Welcome back to Tech, Tesla, and Trends. Tonight, I figured I'd touch base on the Apple and Google apocalypse that threaten Twitter's existence as the tweet goes from Elon. I look at this as a uh, an interesting development in the need for the Pi phone or the Tesla phone or however you want to call it. Originally theorized or promoted as a, an ADR uh, rendering just to show off their skills. Seems like a pretty good endorsement of their abilities. So if you're looking for somebody to do industrial concept art, ADR solutions is probably a good idea. Just going to say. They've done a well, they've done a very good job of presenting an idea whose time appears to resonate within the minds of a large chunk of the Twitterverse and others, and has kept the media and a lot of others chatting quite frequently about will it or won't it? Should it? Well, those are some good questions. I don't have answers for a lot of those, but I have thought about the requirements that would be necessary. And here's my list currently. As far as an OS, they would definitely need that in a requirement. Currently, I believe Tesla is, they, they technically have an OS for their cars. Now, whether or not that could be ported and utilized in any format, I believe it's an Android slash Linux base on that, and I'm not quite sure what's all involved with their current OS for their cars, but you know, they have that integration. It's essentially a phone booth on wheels. You have a car, you have your, uh, the, the car is connected, has its uh, own SIM card and all the rest of that. So it can receive over the air updates as such in a very real sense. All of those people saying that Elon has no clue what's involved in operating or creating a phone are missing that little detail. Never forget that when you have the ability to learn from the things you read and study that you can come up with a lot more insights. And for a guy who can read how to build a rocket and create a rocket company out of that, I would never underestimate him. This is one of the things that a lot of people do. They bet against Elon before they've had a chance to even think through the ideas because they disagree with him. That is always a bad plan. Just because you disagree with somebody's political thinking or method of operating, or if they think about the world in a different way than you, never believe that just because they think differently that they're going to somehow fail. It's a possibility. But in Elon's case, he's made a fool of a lot of people. Who have said he can't do X or Y. And just in case you're wondering, all of those Tesla Q folks, and Gordon Johnson in particular, who have said that the Tesla Semi will never happen, it's vaporware, whatever, <laughs> guess what? December 1st, it's coming. And when everything's said and done, the Tesla Semi is going to change the world. So this is one of the reasons why I do not question a backhanded, tossed-over-the-shoulder type comment from Elon saying, if it happens, he'd build a phone. Because he would. And a lot of people think, oh, well, it would die. Tesla, or, or Twitter would die in the interim. And I don't know that I agree with that either. Because there is a significant portion of people that utilize Twitter in different ways. Now, yes, you can make it more difficult to access it, but I never touch Twitter on my phone. Never. It's just 
it's inconvenient to me. So if it were to vanish from my Android phone, I wouldn't notice. This is important. Yes, there are those that would be impacted. It would definitely impact the ability of people in Iran or other nations to share the video or whatever else is occurring in their real world and the reporting that goes on. If Google and Apple want to chop off the nose of the rest of the world for their own power, that's what they will do. Somebody, and I'm trying to remember who, uh, who came up with it. Uh, is it? Anyways, it's one of the inner circle there at, uh, at Twitter now, uh, or at least uh, at related in some way, shape, or form there, called, called it Mangatech. Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Google, and Apple. Probably was Apple and then Amazon, but regardless, it's the same idea there. There's a group, from that perspective... They all love themselves as much as Orange Man Bad. So it it strikes me as a big argument from a political perspective. And a lot about nothing in some ways and a lot about something in other ways. Because the whole reason Elon got involved and even spent $44 billion dollars is for freedom of speech. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, you know, that's not the case. He's trying to give it time. You know, the fact that Twitter's still up and running proves that it's highly effective. And it's missing 75% of the people that were there. So let's think about that. Efficiency is his one of his major tools. And he has a way of identifying the no part is the best part within systems. It's something to keep in mind. Now, returning back to Pi and how this all ties together. With an OS and an operating, or with that OS in place, and obviously Tesla has a, an app store and, and, her, and the ability to tie in all the rest of the other Typical apps that are expected on a phone, browsing, calling, all the rest of that is something that is functional within a Tesla already. Could it be ported to a phone? Absolutely. Now let's think about Optimus. Optimus, the first version, yeah, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, that's that's nothing. And second version, you know, toting it online or onto the stage. Many people see nothing there. And they will be greatly mistaken and shocked even by where it's at in 2023. And by the end, by the beginning of 2024, it will be an amazing product capable of a lot more than they had ever imagined because of the rapid pace of iteration that occurs within Tesla. And this is important. Tesla operates as a startup. And that is not changing. So if Tesla enters this phone market, it's a startup. It operates in that way. But it's something far more. Because it has the resources capable of challenging both Apple and Google. And they have a manufacturing expertise that is second to none. These are things that Apple contracts. Tesla doesn't. And it's important to understand that uh, the integration of all of those parts and pieces and bringing it together in a way and then eventually pulling it in-house is how Tesla operates. They've had to. So for the phone, you, I really see an initial version very much like Optimus. They'll build a phone with off-the-shelf parts. They'll get the screens from Samsung. They already have a relationship there. All of the cameras and everything else. 
they'll get those cameras as well. Foxconn has offered, would love to build whatever phone is there. Who builds Apple? Oh, that's right. Now, you have to be aware that with vision comes a commitment to your goal. And with this particular issue, I have come to a, a, a bit of an epiphany because of Isar Rachaga and his view of he who owns the screens owns the future. And I think this matters. And I honestly believe that while slow to recognize this, I believe Elon will see this and recognize the truth of it. Which brings us to what would be required next. Stand-up servers. Do they have the resources? Do they have the, co the, the chips that are capable of doing that? Hmm. What have they been testing? Whether or not the Dojo chip comes out the way that we think it will, they'll know by that point. And when that is in play, Tesla can stand up server farms. They have the power capacity to power those farms. And you know it might not even be necessary initially, depending on where Amazon falls on all of this. AWS has been part of what Tesla's utilized. Does AWS want to directly compete against Tesla? I don't think they do. And to create a need and a necessity for Tesla to enter it or to innovate the uh, online server world, that would be a mistake on Amazon's part. But I wouldn't be surprised. Jeff who? Yeah. Bezos may or may not. I know his part in the company is receding, but at the same time, this is uh, something to keep in mind. There is the, this is the company that, that he built. Now, whether they'll interfere in that whole process and join in with the political insanity that's going on right now, I don't know. If half the people in Washington were to shut their mouths and stop talking, it would probably be a good thing. Especially all of the finger pointing and name calling. Let's talk about the real issues. That would actually solve some problems. But that's another issue for another day. And that's not where the Pi phone's at. So, looking at where the hardware comes in, we've touched base on Samsung and Foxconn. I suspect Panasonic would want in on that deal. Probably has the ability and capacity to create cell phone batteries. Samsung does too. So, it might even be Essentially, a large chunk off the shelf Samsung type products. I don't know. It depends on where things are at. That first iteration will absolutely be off the shelf and it'll probably take them less than a year. And that will blow people's minds, but it'll happen fast as soon as that go no go decision is made. I don't know what will trigger it, but I strongly believe that that decision will happen within the next three months. Because that's typically one of those things where Elon's involved. Once the decision is made, they move. But it, it, is, an, it is an issue that until the right moment, he's unlikely to act. So if Apple were to back down and wander away and just keep its mouth shut, probably not. If Google wanders in, probably. So it just depends on how the players behave. If we can all be nice and play together, then the Pi phone is unnecessary. If those large parties decide to go the apocalypse route, 
then it will happen fast and rapidly. And those that say, well, who would buy it? Well, take a look at Tesla owners around the world. There are many people that would call it a cult. And perhaps there's a recognition by most of your Tesla fans, and I count myself among them, that a quality product and a desire to change the world is something worth paying attention to, as well as quality leadership in that regard. Now, a lot of people disagree with Elon, and that's fine. He sees the world very differently than other people. And that is, you know, it's understandable that people aren't going to recognize and completely understand how people with Asperger's think and operate. As a father of kids on the spectrum, it is a thing. They see the world differently. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a wonderful thing. Because that, in a, it, it creates innovation within the world so many times. Because you know, they just go, why not? And sometimes the answer is, hmm, I've never thought of it that way before. Perhaps we can do it that way. And that's exactly how Elon looks at the world. Well, why not? If physics doesn't prevent it, and there isn't a compelling argument to the contrary, that's something that is entirely possible and potentially should be done. That's part of this whole conversation about the, the Pi phone and whether or not it's necessary. So looking at all of these components, the, na the most important thing I think that Tesla would get out of building the Pi phone is a native support for all of its products, all of its hardware and future hardware. And this is something that is a very big deal because Tesla will be entering the home market very soon with their HVAC system and I strongly believe that at some point they're going to enter the, the home security market from a century mode perspective and all of the other um, power related aspects of power wall and integrating with the grid and all of the rest of this, a native integration for all of what's occurring in the Tesla, econ what I jokingly call the uh, Elon economy, uh, is is essentially uh, a necessity. So from that perspective, the some would say that Tesla cannot afford not to enter that phone market. And for Elon's original reasoning not to want to build the phone, being Neuralink, being the future at all, there's still a lot of innovation that's necessary in that. Easily another decade and potentially more, though probably not too much more, before that is truly a functioning alternative. As such, a decade is a big amount of time for those who control the screens to be able to interfere in the vision, to make life multiplanetary, to accelerate the world's adoption of sustainable energy, and all the other visionary ideas that Elon has created and shared and championed. As such, I think there's a high likelihood that the Tesla phone will indeed end up being decided upon. Now, whether it's done by Tesla or not, that's a good question. But I really believe Tesla is the right place for that project if it's going to occur. And as far as what cellular network, well, that's kind of obvious, T-Mobile because they already have that, that partnership and the ability to build bigger. Now, whether or not AT&T and Verizon would play the political game, I don't know. But any 
any network worth its salt is going to recognize that you can either play with Elon or in the future you will be disrupted by Elon. This is the nature of how he thinks. That 10 dimensional game of chess that I have shared often on this channel and explained in more detail in other videos is an important part of this conversation and cannot be underestimated and should be reviewed as you're con considering whether or not this Tesla Pi phone even makes sense. From my perspective, it does. And I'll touch base on those, that 10 dimensional perspective probably tomorrow night's video, but maybe a, a little later, depending on where we're at in the, si in the uh, Tesla semi process. So we'll take a look, see what pops up in the Tesla news and trends and everything else tomorrow night. For now, I'm going to call it a night, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments. We can carry on a conversation there, or you can go find me on Twitter. Have a good night.